Today we're going to take a look at the new Samsung Galaxy Note 20. I'm going to show you the quickest way of going from your Samsung Galaxy Note 9 to a Note 20 and we're starting right now. Dorman Beckles, AKA the High Tech Nomad, and welcome to another video. If you wanna learn how to make technology work for you, start now by clicking the subscribe button and continue on our journey to master technology. I'm gonna show you the quickest way of going from your Note 9 to your Note 20. We have our box here, we're gonna go ahead and open that up. I went with the 512 gig version. This, as you can see, has a little stickers on the back there that's showing us that the box has not been touched by human hands since it left the factory. I bring that up because some of the people on Twitter are saying that they've been getting some boxes that don't have any stickers on them. This one we do. You'll also notice on the front that the pen, the S Pen, in this particular case is all black. And on other ones you'll see it be copper and green. So a quick way to know what version of the, or what color of the phone you have is just look at the front cover and take a look at the pen. So it doesn't look that impressive because we have the black, so it fades right in there. But obviously if we had the copper, that would really stand out. I liked the copper. However, I opted for the black because that's the only one that was available in 512 gig version for my carrier, which in this case happens to be Verizon. I also didn't have too much of an issue with that because around the edge of the screen when I'm watching movies, I know I prefer to have it be black rather than uh, Mystic Bronze or Mystic Green or Mystic whatever. We have our little SIM card key and we have some information. Okay, that'll make good reading for some other time. We're not going to obviously read that right now. Let's take a look and see what else we have in here. Now I'm curious. All right, so we have the phone and ooh, that looks... That looks nice. So here's my Note 9 in comparison. And as you can see, it's not that much bigger. So for people who are saying, oh, the phone is huge. You can see it's not that much bigger. It's actually lighter than my Note 9. So this is, you can see that's just a very, so that, that's actually good because I have some holsters and some other things that I had for my Note 9. And I thought I was gonna have to get something bigger. I do feel the camera bump, it is there, but I'm sure with a case, We'll, we'll deal with that, but it is obviously quite pronounced. But one of the reasons I'm getting this is for the camera. Let's pull that off. Ooh, that's nice. That's really nice. It's a black, but it is a mirror-like finish. That is really nice. It's a shame I'm going to have to put a cover on this, but we'll see. We'll see. It depends upon what my faith is in the new Gorilla Glass Vicodis, whether I think it's going to scratch or not. It's taking a lot of fingerprints. Um, not going to lie, it's going to show up the fingerprints, but it looks nice. Okay, so we'll pull the front off. And we have some other little stickies on the side. We'll pull those off in a bit. All right, so I'll put that aside. Let's see what else we have in the box. And we have a charger and we have a cable. And, oh, this is a... USB-C to USB-C cable. It's a USB-C power pack. So that's pretty good. It is uh, 25 watts, I believe, which should be the, if you have a Note 9, it's pretty much the same thing. It should be zero to 50% in 30 minutes. You know what I'm not finding in here? I'm not finding any headphones. Some people were getting headphones, some people weren't. I have a set of USB-C headphones. I'll put a link to the video I did on USB-C headphones. I will also say I've been using my Galaxy Buds Lives. I'll be doing a video on that, and those are absolutely fantastic. I'm gonna give you a little sneak peek. Those are so comfortable, I've actually been sleeping with them. We're gonna go ahead and turn this on. I got this directly from Samsung, and they knew I was gonna be using it with Verizon. So they've already gone ahead and made connection with Verizon, so I don't have to do all that much to get this up and going, which is nice. I don't have to go and put the SIM card in. It's already in there, it's already programmed, and it's already registered with Verizon. So Verizon is actually in the process of turning off my old phone and switching my phone number and everything over to this new phone. Now the phone will still be usable via Wi-Fi, so I can still do a couple more things with it, 
working. So after a few seconds, the phone is gonna be up and running. What we're going to use is a program called Samsung Switch, which they actually put a lot of effort into to allow you to switch from one phone to the other. I did a video on Samsung Switch before. If you wanna see it in real detail, I have uh, on my phone 506 apps, I kid you not. So I have five, now you may not have that many, but if you have more than two apps, trying to move everything over is just gonna be a real huge pain. I've gone ahead and added my Gmail account, and I'm gonna go into the Play Store, and of course it's gonna ask me to verify who I am, so I'm gonna go ahead and put my password in. And I gotta do all this because Samsung Switch, I'll put the link to it, and I want you to see the icon so you know which one it is. But for some insane reason, with all of the preloaded stuff they've loaded, they haven't preloaded Samsung Switch, at least on the phone I got. I have to go and download that first. That should have already been on the phone so that I could just go ahead and, and switch, but all right. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my Gmail account on and I can't actually connect to my Gmail account until I use my YubiKey my NFC YubiKey, which I'm gonna tap on the back of the phone. I'll put a link to this. This is so that people can't get into my accounts. If you've ever been hacked or you're concerned about being hacked, you definitely wanna take a look at my videos on using the YubiKey. So as you can see, it requires that in order for me to even add this account to the phone, I have to tap the key to the back of the phone. You can watch the videos on this, but I'm telling you, without this key, nobody can get into your accounts. End of story. All right, so if you've had problems in the past, you wanna stop them, get yourself one of these. Now that I'm in to the account, we're gonna go ahead and load Samsung Switch. Once we have Samsung Switch, you'll load it on both phones. You can find it again in the iTunes store, in the Google store, uh, in the Samsung store, either or you can find out wherever you want. Here it's asking me, it says, are we, are you the phone getting the data or receiving the data? I go ahead and I hit receive data and I go on my old phone. Oh, almost saw my little pattern, but I'm gonna go on my old phone and say that this is the phone that is sending the data. And then it asks me if I'm gonna do by Wi-Fi or cable. Obviously 512 apps, we are certainly not gonna do this. It's gonna take long enough as it is. So we're certainly not doing this by Wi-Fi. So we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use the handy USB-C cable that they were kind enough to give to me. We're gonna go ahead and I just have to reconfigure that for a second. So I'm gonna go ahead and tell it that we're ready to start. Now, when this starts, it's gonna ask us a couple of questions. What do we wanna move over? Do we wanna move over the pictures? Do we wanna move over the apps? And if so, do I wanna go in and select the apps? I, I went through last night and deleted the apps off of the phone that I didn't wanna copy over because I didn't wanna go through a list of 500 apps to pick out the ones that I did not want it to copy over. So it'll copy them all over if that's what you wanna do. If you wanna pick and choose, you certainly can do that. It will also try to co copy over your secure folder. However, I have found that does not do as good a job as copying over your secure folder from one to the other. In secure folder, there is an option to do a backup to the cloud. Samsung gives you, I think like 100 gigs of space up there. It also gives you the option of copying the SD card which I don't know why you would do. Uh, in my case, I'm gonna just move the SD card from my old phone to my new phone, so that's easy enough to do. I'm gonna obviously tell it no, I don't wanna do that. Once we start this process, you can still use the phone while you can play with the phone and look at the camera and check out all the, the neat things that you can do with it. It's still gonna take some time for it to do it, but it is still infinitely faster than you trying to do this one at a time. So we're gonna go ahead and jump to probably four or five hours. And by then our phone should be all set and look exactly like the other phone. We're almost at 10,000. There is so much more that we can do for you guys once we get to 10,000. So we really appreciate it. Just hitting that button means a lot to us and allows us to do more videos. We've got a whole bunch of Note 20 videos coming out. We've got one on decks. We've got one on tips and tricks that you won't find anywhere. We've got the Galaxy Buds live tricks that you won't find anywhere. Go along on the journey with us and help us help you make technology work for you. Until the next time, this is Orman Beckles, AKA the High Tech Nomad, signing out.